In today's video, I'm going to share why cruciferous vegetables may be one of the best foods to add in your menopause diet, why I use it as an essential part of my menopause diet when it comes to reducing my menopause symptoms, as well as minimizing the risks for estrogen related diseases. Cruciferous vegetables are things such as cabbage, kale, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, pak choy, sweet, rocket and radish and those types of similar foods. If you're new here my name is Shirley and I'm a nutritional therapist with a three-year diploma in nutritional therapy and on this channel I'll share videos to help you with food and lifestyle solutions that may help you through your menopause journey whether you're taking hormone replacement therapy or whether you want to go through menopause naturally. So how can cruciferous vegetables be one of the best foods for menopause? The thing with cruciferous vegetables is that they provide compounds to act as anti-inflammatory, antioxidants and chemoprotective. There are also good sources of beta carotenes, folate, vitamins C, E and K, as well as fiber and natural plant phytoestrogens. This study found that cruciferous vegetables may help with reducing blood sugar imbalances and thereby reducing risks for diabetes, reducing hypertension or blood pressure issues, lowering cholesterol levels as well as mood issues such as low moods, depression and anxiety, supporting our brain health, so helping with memory issues and learning and recall, as well as keeping our muscles strong and minimizing muscle loss and keeping our bones strong. Another reason that cruciferous vegetables may be one of the best foods for menopause is because of its chemoprotective properties. And that's basically minimizing our risks for estrogen associated diseases for me that means minimizing my risk for cancer. When I started researching menopause it was really to do with reducing my menopause symptoms and they were disturbed sleep, brain fog, low moods and depression which was the trigger for me to go and see my doctor. I'm no cancer specialist, I'm just sharing what I've learned in terms of estrogen metabolism and how too much estrogen in our body can increase our risks for estrogen related diseases or estrogen cancers. Like everything else that the body does, once it's used up estrogen, it needs to get rid of it or the byproducts that gets created when estrogen is used. But this isn't a straightforward process. Estrogen can go through different pathways, and this is affected by things such as genetics, poor food choices, too much sugar in our diet, lifestyle, alcohol intake, xenoestrogens and these are the compounds that get created from plastics, too many toiletries, too many perfumes, using too many body products and things like food packaging. You may be wondering why is the pathway of estrogen metabolism important? very good question. So the three pathways are the 2OH, the 4OH and the 16OH and without making it all sciencey and complicated the reason that it's important is because depending on the pathways that oestrogen takes increases our risk for oestrogen related diseases or cancers. And the pathways that increases those risks are the 4OH, which is the most cancer-forming pathway, the 16OH, which is deemed to be safer, but depending on your diet, lifestyle and other factors, it has the ability to be converted into the 4OH pathway. And this is where cruciferous vegetables come in. When we eat cruciferous vegetables and they get digested, they interact with the bacteria in our gut. And as a result, they create other compounds such as diindole methane or indole-3-carbonyl, 
and this carbonyl compound support the metabolism of estrogen into the safer 2OH pathways. Not only that, but the compounds of cruciferous vegetables may also have the potential to kill off cells that may grow into cancerous cells. Another reason that cruciferous vegetables may be one of the best foods for menopause is because of their fibre content. And that's because once our body has metabolised and made estrogen safe, it packs it into our stools or into our urine or we sweat out those byproducts. However, if you're constipated, the estrogen byproducts that may be stored in your stools stays in your body for too long. And what may happen is that other compounds in our body will react with those safely stored estrogen byproducts. And this may result in estrogen dominance as well as the associated risks for estrogen diseases. And this is one of the reasons why cruciferous vegetables are really important as part of your menopause diet when it comes to helping regulate your bowel movements and getting rid of the estrogen that are stored in your stools. So how can we add more cruciferous vegetables in our diet? It's important not to overcook them so as not to destroy those compounds that they contain. Whether you're cooking them lightly in water, steaming them, adding them to stir fries. Sometimes I just add them on top of rice that's cooking just to let the steam from the rice cook them. If you're not used to eating cruciferous vegetables, it's important to start off slowly because of the compounds plus the fibre, you may find that you will get bloated. And I know that bloating is one of the symptoms of menopause. But as you add more cruciferous vegetables in your diet, you'll find that your body gets used to it. Your gut bacteria will get used to having all those different compounds. Eventually, the bloating will settle down. And I know that it can be difficult when you're not used to eating those types of vegetables. So start off slowly. So, for example, have a portion of cruciferous vegetables, whether you're talking about broccoli, cauliflower or pak choy. Have a portion as a side dish in one of your meals one evening. And if that goes down okay, have it again on another meal later on in the week, whether you have it for lunch or for dinner. And increase the amount of cruciferous vegetables that you are adding in your menopause diet. And hopefully, eventually, you will get used to having more cruciferous vegetables in your diet. Like everybody else, these sort of vegetables were never the big part of my diet. But now I do actually quite enjoy them. And for me, it's more the mental thing of, I know that I could be eating rice, pasta or other nice gooey tasty foods. But I'm thinking more about the benefits that they are doing for me and in terms of reducing my menopause symptoms as well as minimising those risks for estrogen related diseases. A lot of the time now I use cruciferous vegetables to bulk out my meals and I use cruciferous vegetables as my way of getting my carbohydrates instead of the rice, pastas or potatoes. By using cruciferous vegetables for bulking out your meals and using them as your form of carbohydrates, you may find that it's easier to lose menopause weight gain. And that's because of the fibre that these vegetables contain in terms of helping to bulk out your food so you will feel more satisfied feel full for longer, they release their sugar or glucose slowly, which means you get less of those insulin spikes. And insulin is known as the weight storing hormone. So by adding more of these cruciferous vegetables, you may find that it's a lot easier to lose your menopause weight gain. If you'd like to know what the four essential foods are as part of my menopause diet, check out 
this video.